I'm Byron Hauser with Nussbaum Automotive Solutions. Today we're going to do an installation video on our SPL series lifts. We're going to go through laying out the floor, putting up the columns, uh, everything it takes to make it. At the end of it, we're going to show you our extended length columns, how to set those up when they come out from the factory. We're also going to show you our low profile arms, which turn it into an SPL 8000, our uh, patented double jointed arms, which we call auto, so the SPL 9000 Auto. So let's get started on laying this thing out. So we're gonna start by laying out your shop for showing you how to lay out your shop for the lift. What you want to do is find a consistent place to measure off of. It might be the back wall where the door is. It might be the front wall that you're pulling off of. Uh, we got to get consistency so you can snap a line so you know where everything's going to be. With me, I've got Eric Forson. He's a, here at Nussbaum Automotive Solutions in Gastonia. Eric, how long have you been with the company? Seven years. Seven years. Right here in the, this company. He's done virtually everything, everything. haven't you? That's yes, exactly sir. right. I think he's even cleaned the bathroom on a couple of occasions. <laughs> um, but what we're going to do is measure our lines. Then we're going to snap a line just to get this thing going. So what we're going to do, we're going to go off of this control joint. Eric's going to hold the tape for me. We're going to measure five feet. We're going to come to this side, we're going to measure five feet. Then we're going to snap a line. If you got a chalk line, of course it makes this a lot easier. You can draw it, put it down by measuring a, a bunch of times from the front wall and then just connecting the lines with a straight edge, but a chalk line certainly works easier. So we're going to pop it. Then what we're going to do is take a square, we're going to lay it down on the front part of this, right on our, on our line. We've already measured 124 inches because the SPL can be set up at either 124, 128, or 134 outside to outside. So what we're going to do, line it up on the chocolate line, we're going to put a pencil mark on that side. Here Eric, I'll let you do the the pencil marking, get this lined up on this side. Right at the edge of that line is 124 inches. So now you have a basic, a basic layout for your lift. We'll have to square it up later, but this gives it gets us to thin an eighth to a quarter of an inch of where we need to be. Next thing we're gonna do, start uncrating this lift. Basically the box that we're going to get from the factory, um, 144 inches long, 40 inches wide, comes with some really heavy duty bands on it. Make sure the bands are sharp so you don't want to cut yourself. So let's start cutting these things, get them out of here. At the end of the day you'll have some nice firewood. Inside the box, more bands that you can cut. All right. So then what Eric and I are going to start unloading this thing. We're going to pull the cables out one end. The cables are inside. We'll pull the power unit out. This is the big box in the middle. We'll set it right back here for now. Your ex accessory box, which we'll go over here in a little bit, exactly what it's got in there. These are all the hardware and everything to put the lift together. Good. Then your arms are down. Oh, you got a top beam. This is your top beam and all your hydraulic lines. So we're going to set this down right here. Got more bands you have to cut. Your long arms are setting right in here. I would highly recommend that two people pull these out because it's a little bit heavy. 
So we'll get under it. We'll set these back here out of the way. And we've got your two short three-stage arms right here. And that basically unboxes the lift. From this point, you're either going to need a forklift or a bunch of friends. So next step, getting the columns off the column, off the pallet. So in the meantime, we've taken the liberty to use the forklift and take the columns off of the pallets. Um, at this point, what we're gonna do during the un uninstall, the unbox process, there's a couple things. There are cylinder covers that are inside the thing. We've taken those off. There are four of these. So we took those off. We're going to do take everything off of this. We have to before we stand it up. There are two lock covers that go on with a three millimeter Allen on both columns, one on both columns. You want to get these off before you stand it. It just gets it out of the way. One less thing you're going to have happen. There are two plugs in the top of the cylinder. One of you here, right in the top, and one right in the top of the other side. Pardon my column rocking on me there. <laughs> you take those out, and last but not least, before we took them off the pallet, these two straps, basically there's one on each end that strapped one column to the other column so they don't move in the on the pallet. 17 millimeter nut, 17 millimeter bolt, just both sides, take it off. That'll get everything loosened up. So what we're gonna do now is get a strap, something like this. I wouldn't recommend using a little one inch ratchet strap or something. If you've got a big yellow ratchet strap this wide, you can use that. We're gonna stand one with the forklift and we're gonna stand one by hand the old fashioned way in case you don't happen to have a forklift on your side. So we're gonna get ready to do that now. Now we're gonna go to the old fashioned part of standing the column. Uh, the old-fashioned meaning by manpower. So, we've got Joey here, who has been, he's machining and he's also assembling. We've got Trevor, who's an engineer, um, designed some stuff. There's a lift right behind us that he pretty much did. And we got Matt over here, um, that is, with the thumbs up, good Matt. He's with our Carvana division usually, but today we just have to ha happen to have him in-house. So, what we're gonna do, basically we're just gonna lift up on the end of this thing. We're gonna just, we're just gonna rotate it up, so. Ready guys, let's get down here, we'll grab on. Ready, one, two, three, up. And then we're gonna go under here like this. And we're just gonna go up like this and kind of keep coming like that. And get squirted with hydraulic fluid because there was hydraulic fluid in the top of the cylinder. So that's pretty much how you put, lift them by hand. So you get three guys and, and pay them however you wanna pay them. And uh, you can get this thing up by hand and not have to have a forklift. So each one of these weighs at approximately 800 pounds. So, so that's all for that. We'll get them moved into place and then we'll go to start setting it up. Okay, so this is basically the contents of your pallet. You've got the overhead, it's got the shutoff, the hydraulic tubes are in there, and then your structural, your two long arms, your two short three-stage arms. This is your motor and pump unit, and this is the box of all the accessories. You come back, we've separated all the box of the accessories, so in that you have your owner's manual, you have a hydraulic line hookup for both the, the upper and the lower, lock release lever, lock release ball. These are your bolts for your motor pump, these are your bolts for your overhead, bolts for cylinder covers, snap rings for your arm pins. These are all four screw-up pads for the arms, your lock cable release, your overhead return line, the zip ties for that line, and the fittings that go into the top of the cylinders. And you also have, if you recall, we can set this at different widths. 
If you go to 134 or 128, these come because you have to lengthen your cables with these. I've also shown the three inch and the one and a half inch height adapters. These are optional. So they don't, if you order them with the lift, they'll come with it inside that box, but these are an optional piece. So magically our columns are already in place. Um, just to let you know, and I think we mentioned it earlier, that this is our R&D facility, so we test lifts here. So the anchors are actually already in for this lift, so we're cheating. Uh, it is set at 124, but at this point, what you would do is the line you snapped and then the, and then the perpendicular lines you drew to it at 124, you're gonna walk the columns up till you get those as close as you can on those lines. Then what we're gonna do, you're gonna take, let's go, you go to that side, okay, right, Eric? That'll work. We want to square the lift. We want to make sure both the outsides of the lift are parallel. So we're going to measure it here on the front, and you should have 124 inches. And then when you go to the back, right here, you should have 124 inches. That means they're parallel. But what you have, now let me back up. This lift can also be set at 128 or 134. If you elect to set it at one of those settings, then of course you would have those for your outside lifts. At 124, it means they're parallel. It doesn't, but they could, one could be in front of the other one if your line was a little bit off. So at that point, what you do is you measure from the back corner of one to the front corner of the other. Okay, you do that. And then what you do is switch positions. And you measure it like this. If that number is the same, then they're right. If this one happened to be longer, you would shove this column down the line and it would make that one smaller or smaller and the other one larger. So basically that's how you square the lift up. So after you get it all squared, you go, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drill. This is your typical hammer drill. Uh, you can rent these at Home Depot. You can rent them in any home place. Um, this is a three quarter inch hammer drill bit. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go into these right here and you're going to pull the trigger and drill. So when you do, the one thing you want to make sure you don't do, don't push down on the hammer drill. Just pull the trigger, keep it straight up and down and let the drill do the work. And I can't stress enough that you go all the way through the concrete. You always go until you go all the way through the concrete, making sure there's no electrical lines or anything else that you're going to run into. But if you don't go all the way through and you have an anchor that doesn't bite, it starts turning on you, which happens. If you don't go all the way through, now you're having to move your lift because you can't use that hole. If you drill all the way through, what you can do at that point is drive that anchor all the way down into the soil below and put a new anchor in on top of it. So important thing, drill all the way through. Once you get it drilled through, then you're going to have all the way around, you're going to take your anchors, which this is a three quarter wedge anchor. As it goes in, you drive it all the way in, you have the nut on it, you put your nut on like that, you drive it down, and then you're going to tighten your nut slightly, it's going to try to pull up, and what does, this wedge kicks down into the concrete and it won't let it pull up. So you're going to put the wedge anchors all the way around, drive them in until they're just about like this, but you don't want to tighten them at this point. You've got 18 of them to do all the way around, and a good two and a half pound hammer works well when doing this. Once those are in, these are shims that go with it. You're going to have to level the column. So you'll take, or I should say plumb the column. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your level like this, and you're going to look, this one just happens to be just right, but let's just say it was leaning like this. What you would do is you would take these shims, there you go, you would push the column this way, usually with help, if you could pull that column that way just a little bit, and then you put your shim under there. These come in eighth inch, that was a sixteenth, and then here's your eighth inch, and then here's a quarter inch. So you do it like this, and then at that, after that, then you have to look front to back 
and you put it like this. It just so happens that one's leaning a little bit backwards. So you pull your level in and you see it has to go like that. So then what you would do is you take the appropriate size shim, you would lean this forward like this, and you would put your shim in under like that. So that would level up the column, and then what you do after you get all the column around the base, you want to make sure with all your extra anchors that you put shims under all of those. Now we sell, the lift doesn't come with them, but we sell a pack of three quarter inch anchors, 18 of them for this, as well as an assortment of shims for your floor. So we can put that in. Once you get both sides plumbed up, both front and rear, side to side, you can go ahead and tighten this, drive it all the rest of the way down, then tighten this up. And we're gonna tighten it to 85 foot pounds. If you've got a torque wrench, if you don't, a breakover bar, just tighten it as far as you can get it and you will be good. But you want to make sure it doesn't spin, you want to make sure it tightens up. And after that, we'll be ready to go up top and put the overhead beam on. So once you get done, of course, uh, we went all the way through. You need to clean off all of the uh, the dust that comes out of it. A lot of times, it's good to use a dustpan and a broom and get the most of it up because it'll want to clog the filter and your vacuum real quick. But we don't have a dustpan and filter right, or dustpan and broom right now, so we're just going to vacuum this all up. So go ahead, Eric. Let's. The other thing you want to do when you get the majority is make sure you get over the hole and clean the majority of the dust out of the hole because that will help the anchor to bite. When you get all of them drilled, two and a half pound hammer, your anchor, that's about where you want your nut on it. Just take it in here like this. Just like that. That's where you're anchored and then you'll go back and level after that. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we've got the columns basically plumbed. We've got them bolted down. We're going to lift the carriages up into the first lock. If you're really strong and got a good back, a person could do this by themselves, but it's really advisable to have two people. Um, you will hear when it hits the lock. The lock is right back here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to go nice and slow with it. You can hear when it hit the lock. And then we're going to go over here. And this is the other reason you take the caps out of the caps out of the top of the cylinders. Because as you lift this thing up, if the cap is still in there, it just tries to pressurize it. It makes it really, really hard. So we're going to go nice and slow on this one. And you'll be able to hear right there. So we've got the carriages up. That'll allow us access to our bottom pulleys. We've got our top beam here on the floor. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to tip it over towards us. Actually, Eric's got two 10 millimeter bolts on that end. He's going to show you those and start taking those out. I have a shoulder bolt on this end, which is an eight millimeter Allen on one side. If you don't have an eight millimeter Allen, a pair of vice grips on that works just fine and a 17 millimeter on this side. So we're going to take this up and be right back. So we've unpacked the top beam. There's basically three pieces. You've got the top beam itself, you've got the overhead shutoff, and you've got your hydraulic lines. So the beam comes to set up for 124 inches. Eric and I are going to lift this. As you notice inside here, you've got different holes. You take out the four bolts. You put, pull it out to the next time, the four bolts will line up, the four holes line up on the inner and outer piece. That'll be your 128. If you want 134, you pull it all the way out till all four holes line up again on the next step. On the overhead cover, the overhead shutoff, it's the same. You've got bolt holes in here. Here set up for 124 inches. You take the four bolts out, move it out to the next four holes line up, that's 128. Move it out to the next one, that's 134. 
You also have your hydraulic line. Actually, you have three hydraulic lines are packed in here. You have a tall one. You also have two pieces. If you'll notice, this one has a little crook in it. This one's straight. This one hooks up to your pump, so you're going to use this later. This is the one that hooks up to your other piece of your hydraulic line like this, all right? So because of the nature of it, this is 134. If we cut one 128 inch lift, we're going to cut six inches off of this piece. If we want the 124 inch lift, we're going to cut 10 inches off of this piece. You're going to do that with a hacksaw, make the cut as nice as you can. You're probably going to want a file because you've got a compression fitting is going to go over that. And speaking of that compression fitting, it will come looking like this in your parts box. So what this is, we've always, we've had people call and say, well, the, the compression fitting's not there. Well, it is because it's actually spun onto this piece, which will go onto your pump. So the compression fitting is actually right there. The compression ferrules in the nut. You're going to put it on there after you cut it. You're going to put it on here like this and then tighten it up on here. All right. Once you do that, when you do that, let's lay this on the floor, Eric. When you do tighten that up, it's easier if you have someone stand on both ends or stand on one end and stand on this end while you're tightening up because you want both of these drop legs to go in exactly, you want, to, want them to stay parallel with each other. You don't want them crooked one way or the other. So we're going to get this tightened up and then we're going to start putting stuff on top of the lift. Okay, so we're going to run the equalizing cables right now, and this is done in a bunch of little steps, so what we're going to try to do is segment this out and just show you each little bitty step at a time. First thing, snap ring pliers, we're going to get down in the bottom of the column, that's why we raise the carriages up, and we are going to take the bottom snap ring out of here and take the bottom pulley off. Some people prefer to call them sheaves, but anyway, bottom pulley on that side, that's off. We've got one on the other side we'll take off too. Okay, so if you notice, on the power side column, the bottom shiv sets at an angle, okay? It's important to know because you have to realize how to get this out. When you run the cables, that becomes important. On the passenger, on the driver side, the off column, you will see that the shiv, she, pulley, whatever you want to call it, sets in straight. That's important when it comes to knowing how to run the cable. So now we're going to go up on top of the lift and show you what has to happen. So this is the cable coming up on your power side column, okay? So now it's, which is the front of the lift? We're going to call the side with the motor the front of the lift, okay? So what you're going to do is there's two pulleys right here. We're going to pull this cable on the pulley closest to the front of the lift on the power column. So it's coming up from the carriage, it's fastened down there, so that's where we are now. This is the cable coming from the front pulley on the power column. Of course, since it comes from the front pulley over there, it's going to go on the front pulley here. So we're going to drop this right down in there like that, and we're going to leave it just like that for now. Now, we're going to go back. We're on the off column, the non-power side. This is coming up from the bottom from the carriage is this cable. It's going to go on the back closest to the drive on side of the lift. It's coming up on that pulley. So now what I'm going to do, get back down the ladder. We're going to go across to the other side and we're going to put it down on the other side. Okay, this is the, the cable coming from the off column. It's on the drive on side of the lift on the opposite pulley. On this side, of course, this is the the rear pulley, if you will, this being the rear of the lift, the drive-on side, you're going to take this one and run it down, and run it down about that far, making sure your cables coming from side to side are not wound together or not crossed. Now we have to run it through the column down to the bottom. Okay, the, we have our cables over the top pulleys, right from left to right. They're coming halfway down the column. This is the hardest part because they have to go through this in exactly the right place or you're going to have trouble and the first time you let your lift down it's going to rip the cable off the bottom pulley. So this carriage is exactly like that one, setting in exactly the same location. What you have 
is this is where the cable is comes from beginning when it goes up but if you look down here and right here this is where the cable has to come down okay you're we're gonna see this we're gonna look up under there this piece of square tubing the cable does not come through this no 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 it has to come through this little square right here if it coming through this piece of the carriage when you look down and it comes through there if it comes through that piece of square tubing it's wrong it comes right under it right here where the other cable sets okay the best thing that's ever been developed for putting these cables through and getting them through the right slot is the flashlight on your cell phone so what I do is I set my cell phone right inside there because I know I know from where that thing is exactly where the cable's got to come through. So then I can go to the top of the lift. And if you have a nice long ladder, this a nice tall ladder, this helps. But you can also start pushing this cable down. As you notice right now, the cable has just a little bit of a crookedness to it, so I'm going to straighten that out. And when I look down here, and I look down to where my light is, I can literally see the pathway, and I can spin the cable as to where it needs to go. And again, if it goes through any pieces of, any pieces of square tubing, it is in the wrong place. I cannot stress that enough. Then as you're going down and you can see the light and you can see the hole it has to go through, if you spin the cable with your hand, you can get it to fall to just the right spot. Robert, if you look down there at the bottom, you will probably see the cable coming through. So the cable actually hit my phone. So now we're going to take it like this. Yes, it goes up there. Let me get the ladder out of the way. I'm going to pull that. Now, if I look, there's a piece of channel right here that runs all the way up and down the back side of the lift. It's the lock ladder. So what I'm going to do is find that piece of channel that runs all the way down the bottom of the lock ladder. And I'm going to stick it right inside there. You cannot miss it. And you can look right here, Robert, if you can. You can see it right there. See where I'm putting it right there? That's the lock ladder, so it goes right here. I'm going to run it up like that. And there was a reason I left that nut on the top of the carriage, because now I can come up here. There's a hole right at the top of the lock ladder. I can bring that up like that. And I can put my nut on that other side we're going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to take my phone I'm going to take and put it right here because that's where I know it comes down and when I get on top of the ladder I can actually see that light And again, if the shank in the cable is not falling to exactly the right place, you literally turn the cable and it'll rotate the shank till it goes through the hole. It's almost like a circus game, an amusement game with grease. So we have that down there now. It should be at the top bottom of the hole. Let's move this sideways, Eric. Again, we have our cable down here at the bottom, right here. I'm going to take and pull it through. And then again, right here on the side, you can see right there is the lock ladder. It will go right into that hole right there. Once you get it in there, there's no way out. It goes right to the top. And then you can reach up here into the top, like this. And then there's a hole in the very top. Where you pull it 
through the top. And you put the nut on. And you put the nut on. So that temporarily puts your cables in. We're going to put the overhead on now. Um, <clears throat> this is really a two person job. This overhead weighs probably 50 pounds like this. Uh, you can carry it up the ladder by yourself, but it's a little bit difficult. So Eric and I are just going to go up, kind of put it up in our arms here. And we each are going up the ladder with 17 millimeter wrenches right now. So we're going to set it on. It's going to go over the top like this. Just like that and just set it on the top. So when you do this, basically start the bolts in on one side. This is another reason why Sometimes it's easier to leave your base completely. You can shim it up, but then you might want to loosen your bolts a little bit because that allows the top of the column to go in and out. So it makes it easier to line up the bolts. If you can't get it lined up, you can bring like a Phillips screwdriver, sometimes a bigger one than this, and you can put it in the bolt hole and then literally pry in and out to make the, to uh, get the holes lined up so you can put the bolts in. After getting the overhead put on, what you're going to do, uh, if you notice there's two drops on this, two 90 degree drops, they will go up onto the, across the top of the overhead. One drop is six inches long, the other drop is basically five inches long. If you look up here, on the off side, you just have this hydraulic fitting. But on this side, you have a T that's on that. So the short side, in other words, the five inch side will go on this side. The longer side or the six inch side will go on that side. So Eric and I will go up and put these on. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. So when you tighten the line up on, on the top of the cylinder, a very important thing you have to do. If you notice the bracket right here, this is for the cylinder cover. It needs to be parallel with the front of the with the front of the carriage because if you go like this of obviously the the carriage is going to hit the bracket at this point so you turn it like that 17 and a 22 get your 22 on like that and turn your 17 and make sure that it does not move when you're tightening it up just like that so now we'll go to the opposite side Yep, we're on. Again, as you notice, the front of the cylinder, the front of the cylinder, the bracket on it is parallel with the front of the carriage. So that has your hydraulics hooked up at that point. So now we have to do because this is a pulling cylinder, it has to have a return line in case any fluid leaks to the top side of the cylinder. So that's what we're going to put in. It's where we took out the caps before. You're going to put there's two 90 degree fittings that will go into the top of the cylinder. And this takes a 14 millimeter wrench. Any of these fittings that we say 14 millimeter, um, an, adjustable, an adjustable will work just fine. On this one, there is a hose that goes down to the reservoir. 
it's usually going to be longer than this. We've already cut that off. We're going to put it onto that T. It's just a press lock. You put that on there like that. It comes with this length of tubing. I'm going to cut just a little bit off like that with my snips. I'm going to go like this with that. I'm going to bring this around just like this. Actually, a little bit shorter. Put it in there like that. Then what I'm going to do is take the rest of this. Put it in the T. I want to take the zip ties that also come in that, and I want to put a zip tie in right here. I'm going to tie this to the hydraulic line. Back here a little bit, and cut that off. We'll go to the other side. We have one more T left. We'll put that in this cylinder. And snug it in with a 14 millimeter inch. We're going to pull this just a little bit. You don't want this very tight because this tubing will shrink over time and it'll pull off of the thing. So we'll cut that off like that. We'll put it in there. Put another zip tie on it. Tidy it up to the top there. And we'll put one other one on right over here. And tidy it up to the top. Cut that off. Cut that off. And that's our return line back to our tank for any fluid that gets to the top side of the cylinder. Next, we just have to put the overhead shutoff on it, and we're just about to be done with the top. So now we're going to install the overhead shutoff. Basically, vehicle gets up. It's going to shut the lift off before it has a, before it can crush the top of the vehicle. Eric's with it. Two 10 millimeter bolts on one end. Has the shoulder bolt goes through on this end. Also, show you how to adjust it. Uh, it's easier with two people. If you only have one person, what you can do is put a little bungee cord or whatever around the the top beam on the other side. And then, as you carry it up, you can put that on the other side. Hold this here while Eric starts his bolts. You got yours, Eric? Yes, sir. Okay, so you have this bolt that goes through. You also have a tab right here on the shutoff. This tab has to be over the top of the shutoff in order to work. So what we'll do here, put this bolt through like this, and it will go up through the top of the lift. with a washer and a 17 millimeter nut on top. What you have to do here, you have to adjust this shutoff up as it catches the tab on the switch on the shutoff. The tab will come up to within approximately an eighth of an inch of touching the overhead limit switch and that's where you want to adjust it to because as you tighten this bolt up on the 
overhead. It will bring the tab up if you'll come around here, Robert. This tab is sitting on top of this. As you adjust this up, where it touches the switch on the inside, you want about an eighth of an inch gap inside there. Tighten it just a tad too tight. So right there. So that's your overhead limit switch. While we're up here, the next thing we're going to do is put our overhead lock cable on. That way the top end of the lift is all complete. To finish up on the upside of the lift, on the top side, we got the lock cable is going to go on. We're going to take the swaged in and it's going to go on this side of the lock. So we're going to put it here. It has three millimeter Allen with a very, very small nut. Um, I'll let Eric take that and put that on. He's going to take the cable. This out of it. Yep. As you can see, it comes through the cables, cables on the inside of the lock because that matches the slot in the cover. So now that we've got it attached to the lock, what we're going to do is take the other side up to the top. There's a pulley right here that's pre-mounted to the overhead. I'm going to run it in here over to the top of the pulley. Make sure you get it on the pulley or the lock, lock won't function correctly. Eric's going to take it to the other side. He's going to run it through the pulley there. Pull it nice. Keep in mind the carriages are setting on the locks right now. So now what I will do is take a 10 millimeter wrench and I'm going to come back to this side and on the lock mechanism there is a hole right there with a 10 millimeter bolt in it. Then I'm also going to take the lock rod. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to pull this a little bit tight. Just, just snugging it up. And then I'm going to tighten the 10 millimeter bolt down on the cable. And that point our locks are actually adjusted and it's ready to go. In case you're wondering why we have extra cable here is because this is also meant for our extended height lift. So what we're doing now is repositioning, we're just basically going to put on our bottom, our bottom pulleys again. So as you can see the, cable, the cable's right here, it's just looped. So we're going to put this in, the pulley has a raised side on one side and it's flat on the other. The ray side goes back towards the out, towards the metal plate. So what you do is just put the cable over the pulley, then push it down over the axle. Take and put the thrust washer on. Take your snap ring and put it right back like that. Then you do exactly the same for the opposite side. Ray's place goes in. You're going to put it right over the top of the cable. You're going to have to push down on it. Thrust washer goes back over the top of that. And your snap ring goes there. So that, include, that concludes putting on your equalization cables. Now one thing I might mention if you are not careful when you put these up and you get one on one lock and one on maybe the second lock, your cables will absolutely not fit. They have to be on the same lock. Just a little hint there. So now we're going to go on to installing the power unit. Now we're going to put the power unit on it. This is exactly what comes out of the box. So this is one of those things it's really hard to do by yourself. Uh, 
you've got a helper, it's good. If not, a bungee strap where you can put it up here and kind of bungee strap it around, or not bungee strap it, but um, ratcheting strap, tie it to the column. So Eric's gonna pick it up here. You're gonna put basically bolt through here, through the back slot, and then in through the top slot of the motor. As the guy that's holding the pump, this is where you hope that someone that starts the nuts is <laughs> doesn't fumble too much around with them. So we're going to put this one right through this bottom slot here. Washer on this side. And another, these are nylock nuts by the way. So now we have our bolts loosely placed on our motor and pump. This is our line that we talked about earlier that was packed in the overhead. This is the main line that goes to the top. This is the curve line. This is the piece that we talked about earlier that had the nut and the ferrule that you use in the overhead line. It bolts right into the motor right here is where that goes in. It spins in and then it has a nut that compresses back like that, that actually compresses the washer back here that makes it seal up tight. So I'll give that to Eric. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna go on here like this, pull this like this. And just lightly fasten that like that. I'm gonna take the handy dandy adjustable wrench because this is not in the right way. I'm going to move it like into a horizontal position. I'm going to shove that and straighten it out like that. We'll tighten this one up like this. Actually, I'm going to use the adjustable because it's a little bit nicer. that one up and tighten this one up. So once you get the line tightened up, then you can come back and tighten the line, fixes the place for the motor on the column. So once it's nice and tight and in place, then you can come back and tighten your motor bolts up. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the cover of the box to hook up the electrical. This is the point where you might want a qualified electrician to come. You're looking at a 220 circuit, 20 amp for this. Pull the screw off, we're going to pull the face plate off. Um, what we're going to end up putting in here, this is your overhead limit switch. That's going to come through here. There's several knockouts that you can use in the top of this. We're going to put this one through here. So what it's going to do, notice you have a male and female spade. We're going to pull either one of these two off. It makes no difference, the two blue ones on the front. We're going to pull that off. That's a female. I'm going to insert the male spade into that. And then I'm going to take this female spade and I'm going to put it right back on the contactor where that came off. All right. We've got a pigtail made up here at the factory already for testing lifts. I'm going to go black to black and put a wire nut on that. Under normal circumstances, that would also get taped. I'm going to go white to white here. Then my ground is going to go right in here. There's a ground screw right there, so my ground is going to go on that ground screw right there. And that will hook up our electrical. Last but not least, there's a tube that came from the upper cylinder that we hooked up up there. It's going to be long. You do not want to leak. You don't want to put this into the reservoir very far. 
and we've also drilled a quarter inch hole right here in the reservoir. So this goes right into here and goes right into that hole. You don't want to leave it long, like down in here, you want to cut it off right here because if you leave it long and it's in the fluid, when the lift comes down, it will suck fluid up into the top of the cylinder. It'll get too much fluid in the top of the cylinder. Then the next time you go up, the fittings up there can't handle the pressure and they'll blow hydraulic fluid all over your shop. Not a good thing. So once you get the overhead leads, overhead lead and everything all hooked up in here, what you can do is take a zip tie right here and tidy it up right to the hydraulic line right there. And then that can go down also inside there. And that should get us the other thing, the long lock lead we can, we can cut off also. So now we need to put fluid in our reservoir and we'll be right back for that. Okay, we're gonna put fluid in here. Basically transmission funnel works best. We're gonna go in here like that. Take our cap and lamp right here. Um, AW32 hydraulic fluid. I know a lot of people put ATF in lifts. I'm not a fan. Hydraulic fluid is what they're supposed to have, but AW32, you can basically get it anywhere. You're gonna put about two, two and a half gallons in. Uh, easiest way to pour this, instead of poking a hole in the top so it doesn't glug, just pour from the top side. And go like this, and just start pouring fluid in. Trying not to let it go over the top of the funnel or anything else. Can get a little bit heavy. So we're gonna put the arms on the SPL right now. I, uh, special thing that I like to do that I was taught early on, I like to get anti-seize if you don't have it. It's not very expensive. You can get small tubes at, at uh, AutoZone or whatever. Um, Napa, O'Reilly, whatever your preferred star, uh, parts store is. But if you take this and you put it right here on the top of this, like this, it will really make your arms glide a lot easier. So we're gonna do that right there. And then we're gonna take the pin out of the, the arm. We've already taken, we've got snap rings on top and bottom. We've already taken the bottom snap ring off. We're gonna bring it, bring it in, it just has to set on the top. And then what you do is basically lift your lock up until your handle and it will, the, the arm will actually pivot on the lock. We'll do like that until it goes in. So now we'll do the rear arm. We'll take the lock the pin out and pull it up. And again, you shove it in so the, the gears match and it will just rotate it around on that until you see the line up. And there's your rear arm in. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so we've got the fluid put in, we've got all the arms put on. The next thing to do is raise the lift to bleed it. So electricity's hooked up, all I'm gonna do you're going to run the lift all the way to the top. It has to fill the cylinders before it starts moving, which it just did. You can hear the locks clicking. And when it gets to the top, if you look at the side over here, it will hit the rod and shut itself off. It's one of the features of an Eastbound lift that when the carriage actually gets to the top, it shuts it off. Not over pressurizing the cylinder and all the hydraulic system. So it shut itself off. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the locks off. So we already have those and we're going to hit the down button. And when it comes down you will notice it's very jerky on the way down. It's because it's got all kinds of air in it. It's about ready to hit the bottom now. that's all the air coming back into the tank so that is the bleeding process on the lift so now we're going to run it back up we're going to adjust the cables and put our cylinder covers on and we'll be done so we're going to adjust the cables right now which are the easiest way to do it um, 
24 millimeter socket, a universal, an extension, ratchet, get you outside. An even easier way to do it is to replace this with a little impact. That, that does it real easy. Your shank is a 14 millimeter. Um, one trick is if you've got a helper, Eric's going to jump up on the arm. He's going to put a board right in here and he's going to pry that cylinder back like that and it kind of gets it out of your way. So you're going to go in here like this. That gets you on there. Then you can go with your shank right here and you can just start adjusting this cable. Just like I'm doing right there. Like I said, a, an impact makes this much, much faster. Okay, when your cables are adjusted right, what you're going to do is you're going to look back in here and you're going to basically just be able to push them with your finger back to the edge. Shouldn't have to strain to do it, all right? So this is the one that comes down on that one and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You just want them to have about the same tension. They don't have to be over tightened. When you, when you pluck them, they shouldn't strum like a bass guitar. So then when you go up, what you're going to listen for as you go up, you're going to listen for the lock on the, the side so that they hit at the exact same time. That means your cables are adjusted correctly. Then you're going to lower it and make sure your locks both catch, which they did. So one note that if you go, if you have to adjust your cables, the one you're going to adjust, whichever lock is slower, so if this one hits first and then this one hits second, you're going to come and tighten this cable up. The one, the one that is behind is the cable that gets tightened. So at this point, what we're going to do is lower it all the way to the ground and we're going to get our covers put back on and that'll about wrap it up. Okay, so your covers, when you put them back in, they go one way or the other. The slots go to the bottom. All right, so your slots are going to go in your bottom. Makes no difference, upper cover, lower cover. We're gonna put the lower ones in first just because it makes it easier. You're gonna bring it, you slide it right down through. And watch out when you slide these because you don't want to slide them along the finger because they will cut you. I'm just telling you now, this happens. So when you come down to the bottom, you want to make sure it's on the outside of the bracket on the bottom. See it's on that, you don't want it to go inside there like that. That's wrong. You want to be on the outside of the bracket, just like that. So at that point, all of your screws are three millimeter. You're going to put them in the top first. Remember the bracket on the cylinder that we made sure was square. You're going to put them in here. You don't use a finish washer because these holes are countersunk. You do not need to put these in tight, tight, because if you're ever the one that has to take them back out, it's not good. So we'll put that in like that. Then the bottom ones actually get what we call finish washers. These are what the finish washers look like. They just go on there like that. So it's just a nice little washer. Go down here in the bottom. Again, if you put, if you did put anti seize on your arms, this is a good place on these screws to put anti seize on them, especially if you live in the north because of salt and rust. Because after a while, even though these are all nicely zinc coated, they can rust. And if you put anti seize on them, when you ever have to take these off to put new cables on your lift. Or adjust your cables it's going to make it much much nicer to put them on after the bottom ones I'll tighten these up and Eric's got those on we're going to put our top cable our top cover on and we'll just go up and make it this right there like that And then it will set right down on top of the bottom cover. The holes will line up. And you'll put your screws in like this.
Then on the top cover, on the top, you only want one screw in. The screw that's on the inside of here is covered up. You never want to put that back in because if you ever, again, have to change your cables or you have to do something with a cylinder, if that screws in, you have to take off your entire overhead. Not a good idea. So we'll put that one in just like that. I'm just tightening the screw up with a three millimeter, three eighths drive Allen. You get that put in, we'll go to the top. And put the top on it. And that involves, that completes putting the cylinder covers back on. One of the first things we took off were our lock covers. They're going to be one of the last things we put on. So, lock the handle lock goes through there. There's a tab on the top. It sticks right through there, just like that. And then, once again, a three millimeter screw. Three millimeter head. With a finish washer, goes right in the corner here. And then we will put a lock handle ball back on this side, just like that. Like that, and then we'll go to the other side. Again, there's a, there's a hook at the top of the lock cover. And the screw just goes on the side like that. That is our lock covers. So now to finish everything up, basically all we have left to do is put our screw up pads, our double screw up pads in each thing. I would highly recommend you keep WD-40 or something on these to keep them lubed up, especially if they're in that rust belt. Um, the optional adapters, yeah, there are two, there's two to go on that side. There are nice little, Nice little holders back here. And then we'll let it down all the way. As you notice, the locks come off. Make sure arm swing and at this point I might add the anchors in these holes that are recessed for instance this one sticking up that either has to be cut off with a sawzall a grinding wheel or whatever it has to be flat with the top of the nut so the arm will actually swing over because it knows how it hits that arm should actually swing further than that so those three anchors with the recesses need to be cut Next we'll show you a couple different arms that we can put on this lift to make it more versatile. So this we put it on no color match, but it's on our blue color that we all also do. This is our double jointed arm that goes on the rear of this lift. We refer to it as the auto arm after the founder of the company. So what you'll notice, you have the first stage of the arm, which is basically where you would have a telescoping part coming out of that. But at that point, what we have is this, where this will come out like this. So at that point, if Eric will reach, will unlock that, we can bring this in. You can see there's all kinds of configurations that you can do. You can almost bring it all the way up like that and bring your front arm up like this. Um, there's just all kinds of things you can do. With it, if you're trying to stay out of the car, you can bring it in like this. You can go just like that, it'll lock, go ahead and lock that in. And then you can bring this one like this. So you've got that configuration. Then what you can do is you could actually come all the way back like this. 
And you can see, pull that up, Eric. You can see how long of a pickup point you can get. Now what this does, and then your adapters obviously fit in the end of it. This does drop it from an SPL 10,000 to an SPL 9,000 because it does reduce the weight capacity to 9,000 pounds. But it is an option that is available for the lift. Okay, so another arm we have available for this be our Low Pro. That makes this an SPL 8000 because it cuts down. But what it does is you notice the last stage of the arm is solid steel and it cuts the, uh, the pickup height down to almost three inches. One of the cool figure features of this arm is when you spin this screw all the way down, the arm is not higher than the pad at this point. So if the pad will go under the car, the arm will go under the car. But this helps you get under sports cars, Corvettes, things like that. Again, available, the columns and, and nothing inside the lift changes. It's just the arms that create the low profile lift. So once again, this is an option for the lift that is available. Okay, we also need to mention that if you widen the lift, the cables, because they're just wide enough for a 124 inch lift, are not going to be long enough. So inside the box came the cable extensions. So the way this works, same as the thread on the cable. So what you do then is you've got two jam nuts. They're right here. You have a connecting nut. You're going to figure out exactly about how far halfway is on that connecting nut, like that. You're going to run it in like this. You're going to put that on there, then you're going to put this on your cable, down on the cable, then you're going to run that in to the end of the cable until it stops, and then you're going to jam this nut up against there. So this creates your additional 10 inches for the 34. If you go smaller than that, you need to cut 6 inches, 6 inches, 4 inches, you're going to use 6 inches of it. And by the way, to, when you jam a nut, you need to have a wrench on this side and a wrench on this side and crank them together. That way this will stay together. Then when you run it up through the carriage, right here, then you put your lock nut on the top of that and you adjust off of this. So now Eric and I, what we're gonna do, we also have Nussbaum makes what we call our extended height lift. Um, comes in the exact same size pallet, but in with the motor is this extension. Um, what most people don't realize about our extended height lift is because the cylinder hangs from the top, it also lifts higher and actually has an 81 inch lift height with the pad screwed all the way down. So at six foot two, I can walk under the arms without even hitting my head on it. So we're gonna show you as we take it out how to basically do one column and that way, if you get into an extended height lift, it'll be easy to do. First thing we have to do is take off the top cap here. It's got a couple bolts on the back side. Now, so as you do this, it's best to do it with two people. Because what we're going to do here, I'm going to pull here. Eric's going to hold down because the carriage will want to come up with the cylinder. So what we'll do is we're going to pull this. That. Pull it up like that. Okay, Eric can come back up here. So what we're going to do is just lift up, get all our stuff on the inside here. Other side is that. Like this. Like that. Now there are bolts that come in the. There are bolts that come in the um, kit that are 19 millimeter. So we've got one started there. You're going to put washers on them. Again, if you have a, an impact that makes this a lot nicer, a little, little 3 8 impact, we don't. So we're going to put them through for the front. And technically, by standard, you're supposed to put the bolt through from the inside out, so upon an inspection, you can see the nut and tell if it is getting loose from the outside. We supply all nylock nuts with the lift, so 
it's not going to come loose. Yeah, one, We're going to lift this up basically and pull this up a little bit further. Pull this up and get it nice and snug on the top. that's the extension put on. So what we're going to do now is take the hydraulic line, because it is a longer hydraulic line, it has to run right into that hole right there. Like there, you can see the hole with a little sign in it, and it's going to come up like this and it's going to go in here. But the other thing that has to happen, and this is all because it's too long to ship on a regular size pallet and when you start shipping oversized pallets freight becomes an issue so we're going to run that overhead line down that and then we're going to take our return line that we did earlier we're going to run it up through the top and then run it down through there and then at that point take our handy dandy zip ties And we're going to run them around here. Here, let's make sure and keep it so it's straight. And we'll start up here. Go ahead. This just keeps it neat inside the column, so nothing's going to carriage or anything's not going to hit any lines. This is much easier to do out here than it is when you get inside the column because the column is full of grease. If you look at this extension, you will see the holes are drilled in it. If you recall, we have a rod that goes down that shuts off the lift. There's only one extension has holes. If you put the wrong extension on the wrong side, you won't have holes in it and you will have no way to mount this. Your only, rec your only way out of it is to take the columns back down and put, switch the extensions or drill and tap holes in the extension that doesn't have it. So I highly recommend looking at the extension and putting the holes on the motor column, the motor side column. So with that being said, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put it right back in here. This. We're going to put our 17s back in. And then when you attach this on, we pulled a rod from production, but when we attach this on right here, there'll be fittings to put the cylinder and the rod together, which will hold it, which will hold it right there. The only thing left at this point is to pull these screws out of here.
the rod will go in here just like this. So that marks down again, with the exception of the hydraulic fittings, which this one, this line didn't have on it, but the line that will come in the case will have on it. You would attach those there, self-explanatory, but this is putting the extension on the column for the extended height lift.